on that good old gospel ship, and we'll go sailing through, through the air. I'm going to take a trip on that good old gospel ship, and we'll go. Jesus, Jesus, 
Jesus, say Jesus, 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 say Jesus, 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 say Jesus, 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 say fix it, Jesus, fix it, Jesus, fix it, Jesus, fix it, Jesus, say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 say Jesus, 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 say Jesus, 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 say fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, say fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, say Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, say fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, Jesus, 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 I know Jesus, Jesus, he will fix it, I know Jesus, I know Jesus, I know Jesus, I know Jesus, I know Jesus. Jesus, he will fix it. I, Jesus, he will fix it. to grab hold of somebody hand and say neighbor I don't know what you're going through but I know that Jesus he will fix it somebody shout hallelujah say he fix it for my mama he fix it for my daddy he fix it for me I know that Jesus can fix it clap the hands and give God praises and shout hallelujah glory to God Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I don't know if you've ever been through anything, and I don't know, amen, if you've ever experienced anything, amen, but I know that Jesus can fix all things. You know, I know that there are a myriad of things a prolific amount of things that Jesus can do. Amen. And there's only one thing, amen, to find or uh, that Webster may have a word that could say that Jesus can do and all other things he's able, but God cannot fail. He can do everything, but there's only one word that they can put out there that God, he just cannot fail. And I'm so grateful to know a God that can create everything and still don't have any flaw. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. We honor him and appreciate him. Clap your hands and give him a praise because he is our God. Hallelujah. We thank God for each and every one of you. To all of our first-time visitors, God bless you. We appreciate you coming today. Amen. I thank God for, amen, the overseer of Church of God, the Bible way, my pastor and father, Apostle C.A. Coward, to the presiding bishop, Bishop Ira J. McLeod, to our district overseer, overseer Kevin Williams, and to our district elder, amen, and to all the pastors that make up, amen, the New North District, amen. We thank God for each and every one of them. 
Thank God to each and every one of you today. You may be seated. I want to talk, amen, and teach from the topic, God or Jesus, the God of the universe. Jesus, Jesus, let me make this plain. Jesus, the God of the universe. Amen. And it's very imperative to understand that Jesus, in fact, created everything. Amen. And I know it's hard for the human mind to understand, amen, how everything consists and exists by, amen, one person. And I know we find it difficult for our uh, brain to figure out how in the world could there be somebody that's outside of everything. Because when we look at nature, we look around the world, we look at each other, we see and could understand by what we see. And because there is a God that created not just the earth, Amen. But not just the moon and the stars. Amen. Not just the solar system, but there was somebody that existed way before earth came into existence. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There was, in fact, a God that existed before the heavens existed. Lord, have mercy. Which means that there is a God outside of everything that created everything. And the good thing, amen, my brothers and sisters, is that we're not confused by who the creator is because we know the creator's name. Yes, and there is a large confusion about who created everything. We know that God created everything, but we know that he has a name, and his name, in fact, is Jesus. Yes. And the Bible says this, I want to, amen, bring your attention Amen to Colossians chapter number one. And I want to talk about this because, amen, if you try to think about the existence of God, you will hurt yourself. Lord, have mercy. I wish I had a few of y'all. Well, Pastor, what do you mean you will hurt yourself? You know that when you have computers, and they try to download too much information, it crashes. And when your brain tries to figure out, because if you try right now, you'll say, okay, well, where did God come from? If God came from somewhere, that can't be the God of the Bible. Because the God of the Bible always existed. He existed before time became time. He existed, Lord, have mercy. He existed before space came into existence. He existed before matter. Y'all ain't saying nothing. This is the God, amen, of the Bible. You know, we find, amen, people try to, amen, study and try to figure out what kind of God is this that he can create everything. See, God is not just a maker, but he's a creator. The difference between a maker and a creator is that a maker is made by the creator. Lord, have mercy. And the creator is the creator of all, all things. I've created everything. Don't you know, amen, that God created air? The air that you breathe in your lungs, amen, God created the air. And people have a hard time figuring out, well, how in the world did this God do this? If you try to figure it out without his spirit, it'll make you fail every time. This is why, see, the Bible talks about the deep things of God. The deep things of God is us trying to find out how in the world we get on this planet. Where was the planet, amen, before people existed on the planet? Where was the galaxy that we're in? So, amen, y'all ain't saying nothing. So, there is a huge thing about where did everything come into existence. And there is, in fact, a creator that created all things. However, that creator is just not known as God, but he's known as the Lord God, the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so what happened was, amen, I'm going to get to the scripture. What happened was, amen, people tried to figure God out, so then they made him into three people. 
They call him God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. And there's no scripture that says that God is three people. The Bible said that he created us in his image and in his likeness. And if you're only one person, I'm here to let you know that God is only one as well. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so we look and we study, amen. If you go to Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to Colossians in a second. Go to Genesis chapter 1. The Bible uh, uh, called this book Genesis because it's the gene of everything. It, it, it's where everything began. When you look at the word Genesis, gene is in the word because that's where everything started. Amen. So the Bible says in the what? In the beginning. In the beginning. Now, let me help you understand this. There wasn't a, amen, beginning until God said for it to start. Let me say that again because some people missed it. Let me help you understand this. There was not a beginning because God is eternal. He has an eternal past and an eternal future. So that means that in God's existence before the earth was created, there was no such thing as the beginning. Because the beginning caused time to come into existence. Before Genesis 1 and 1 was written, amen, or before it says in the beginning, God always existed. God was not created in the beginning. God was before the beginning. And that's why he said in the beginning, God created. Somebody shout hallelujah. So what God, God is so mighty and powerful that he created the heavens and the earth. How in the world can you create a heaven that you can't even see? That's how good God is. You say, well, how could God create, amen, a heaven that I can't see? Well, because God is spirit. Lord, I wish I had 25 of y'all. Watch this now. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Read, uh-huh. And the earth was without form and void. And the earth didn't have... Amen. Any form. Uh-huh. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Uh-huh. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. Now, it's funny that God was, amen, existing, amen, but there hasn't, there wasn't a year yet. There wasn't a day yet. But when you go down to Genesis 1 and 14, read, uh-huh. And God said, and God said, let there be light. Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven. In the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. To the divide the day from the night. So there wasn't even a day and a night before <laughs> God said, let there be a day and a night. Yeah. So the God that we serve is outside, Amen, of what we've written. Yeah. So what we see here is God, Amen, created things, Amen, and before these things were created, God has always existed. And the problem is people try so hard to try to figure out, well, how in the world can this God create everything and nothing created him? Well, that makes him God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, we can't say Buddha is a God because, amen, when God created the heavens and the earth, the Bible said that God had, he had his hands in the water. God didn't touch everything. When you make a Buddha, you got to get some water to touch. Lord, I wish I had somebody to touch that clay to form. Amen. So we can't say Buddha is a God, capital G. Buddha got to be a lowercase g because he came from something that God created. God, I wish I had a few people with me. So we, Lord, I wish I had somebody. So we can't say, amen, I know Martin Lawrence, amen, and some people got this little same spirit that Martin had, amen, Martin went away, amen, he started talking to Brother Rock, and people are creating rocks as gods, and the Bible let us know that God is the rock of all ages. What, let me tell, oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. What that mean is that God, amen, existed before everything in that rock that God is. He was here before the rocks that's at the ocean. God was here before, Lord, I wish I had a few of y'all. God was here before every rock that you see these rocks out here. God was here before then. He is the rock of all. Yes, Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So you have all these different created gods. How are you going to create a God out of something that the God created? The God Almighty created all these things. Let me tell you how strategic the God Almighty is. And we're going to get to his name in a second. The God Almighty is so powerful that he can let a little small sperm that you can't even see with your physical eyes. You have to get a microscope. Small sperm. Come here, Terry become a grown man what kind of God allowed now 
when that sperm, you have seen, when that sperm get in that egg, that sperm, when it meets that egg, that sperm don't have no heart. That sperm don't have no liver. It don't have no kidneys. The sperm don't have no brain. But because of God that we serve, he said, Lord, if that sperm can get in contact with that egg and sit there for about nine months, I'll let fingers come I'll let fingers come out. I'll let toes come out. I'll let arms come out. That's the God that we serve. You ought to shout hallelujah. Somebody shout, that's the God that I serve. I can't be confused. Amen of God. I know people trying to say, amen, that there was a big bang theory and all these different things like that. Hallelujah, there was a big bang theory, but it ain't the bang that they talking about. <laughs> See, when God started speaking, amen, the atmosphere, the Bible talks about God's voice being like a thunder. So when God said, let there be, amen, Bang, they're been. Y'all ain't saying. It. So what happened? What, yeah, we believe in the Big Bang Theory. Amen. We just believe it was God speaking and to the atmosphere. And the Bible says that the word is a seed. So when God spoke, boom. It, God, God, I feel God in here. Every time God said, let there be the atmosphere atmosphere amen was a virgin the atmosphere has never been touched but when God spoke what God spoke it penetrated the atmosphere and that's where your big bang theory came from because the word of God penetrated the atmosphere you ought to shout hallelujah glory to God now we got a God amen that causes us to breathe Nobody in here worried about breathing right now. You're breathing not really on your own, but you're breathing on your own. Because the Bible says it's in him that we, we live, we move, and have our being. So, amen, nobody is really concentrating on breathing, but yet we don't believe God exists. Nobody is concentrating that the body is flowing blood going through the veins back and forth to the heart and nobody understands that God did this. Amen. Don't you know there's something. It's a film on your eyeball. Let me tell you something. God is so powerful that he put a film on your eyeball so you could see far or near. Or I wish I had it, y'all. See, watch this. Somebody had to get their eye replaced or something on their eye. They had to take it off. Amen. I forget what the film is called, but you can peel this. A film over your eyes that help your sight. How in the world did God, amen, strategically design me and put a film over my eye so that I could see right? You got two eyes, but you got one vision. What kind of God? Lord, I wish I had Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. God, oh, glory to God. Amen. You got two ears, but you hear the same thing. You hear one thing. You ain't saying nothing to you. You got two parts of your nose, but you're smelling one thing. God. God. God is such an amazing God that he designed us. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to put this here. Put that there. I'm going to strategically design this person. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I was teaching y'all a while ago that God make everything on you for a reason. We had a nerve, amen. I was teaching y'all, somebody was asking about eyebrows. And I told you that your eyebrows was there specifically to catch sweat from dripping in your eyes. So you mean to tell me that God said, let me, let me form this man and let me draw an eyebrow right there and an eyebrow right there because I know that man will sweat. And so when he sweat, I don't want that thing to get in his eye and burn his eye out. So I'm going to put something there to protect. What kind of God is that? Oh, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. All right, let me get back. Let me get back. Let me get back over here. So what God does is before there was a day, this is why we can't give him a birthday. I ain't going to push it too much. But we can't give him a birthday because he existed before all things. The Bible says that God don't have a father. God don't have a mother. 
God don't have a beginning of days or an ending of days because he is the eternal God. I can't be confused about who God is. Amen. Because when I look around, I see God everywhere. Lord. You say, well, I can't believe in God because I ain't never see him. But you believe in wind and you can't see it. Lord have mercy. You, you, you believe when that wind come, hey, amen. You say, well, I can feel it. Well, I feel God too. Lord, you mess around and praise God. See, God says, oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. See, what God says is that I'm going to live in your praise. If you ain't never felt God before and you're confused about who God is, you might as well just go and praise him see if you can, can touch you. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, we must understand one thing. Amen. You are a component of God. So when God created man, go back to Genesis chapter 2. I love the book of Genesis because it shows us the process of man. Yes. And so I'm going to give you a fast forward of what happened. Amen. What happened was Jesus, which is God, and we're going to get to that point. But God spoke seeds into the atmosphere and he chose the earth, amen, to be his woman. <laughs> Lord. Why y'all looking at me like that? Y'all call him Mother Earth. He chose the earth to be his woman. And the reason of choosing this woman just as a husband and a wife come together, when they come together, they procreate. And so the reason for God, amen, coming together with that earth, amen, so have a baby. Lord, I'm going to show you from the Bible. And so what God did was he spoke the Big Bang into the atmosphere. And what happened was his word penetrated the earth. Amen. And when it got in the earth, it had to bring forth a man. Watch this. Genesis chapter 2. Amen. I'm going to get to it now. Y'all give me a second here. Genesis chapter 2 and 6. Uh-huh. Start at 5. Uh-huh. Genesis 2 and 5. Come on. And every plant uh -huh. of the field, every plant of the field, before it was in the earth, uh -huh. and every herb of the field before it grew, every herb of the field before it grew, uh huh. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, uh -huh. and there was not a man to till the ground. What a man to till the ground? Now watch this part right here, uh huh. But there went up a mist, uh huh, from the earth. Now don't get this confused. The Bible says the mist came out of the earth. My God. Now people are trying to say, well. The earth water couldn't have broke because God talked about rain on the earth in the previous verse. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about rain coming down. This rain came up. <laughs> oh, yes. So what happened is just like the process of a child being born, amen, what happens is that baby's in that womb. And when it's about to come out, there's a water that breaks. Yes. And so the earth, Lord have mercy, was having contractions. My God. <laughs> oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And amen, Adam was dilating in the womb. Lord, I wish I had somebody here that was walking in the spirit with me. And so the Bible says there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. The water broke from the earth. Yes. And then after the breaking of the water, amen, man was formed. Read, yes, uh huh. And the Lord God formed man. And God formed man. Of the dust of the ground. Uh huh. And breathe into his nostrils uh -huh. the breath of life. So now man is dirt and God's spirit, and he became a what? A living, living soul. soul. Now, let me say this. This might be a little too deep for everybody. I'm just going to say this real quickly, and, 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 and I hope you catch it. We existed, amen, before we came here. Yeah. Now, we ain't existing no dog. We ain't just no cat. We ain't existing none of that stuff. Let me show you. The Bible says that we existed, but we existed in him. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. Now, what that means is that we, in fact, was spirit before we got here. What happened was when we got here, we became souls, which is a component of the spirit and the earth creating a living soul. All right, I can't work on that too hard. I, I, I don't want to mess nobody up. All right, let me get back here. All right, now, what happened was God spoke. Amen. And it penetrated the earth. Now, I want you to go down to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It, it takes a spiritual mind to understand what I'm saying. Amen. Let me tell you this. You cannot read your Bible like it's a regular English book. 
Hey, y'all ain't saying nothing. I know it might be old English or English writing, but you can't read it as if it's an English book. You can't even read it like it's a history book. Right. Amen. It's his story. Not history, but his story. Somebody shout hallelujah. So now, if I'm reading it, I can't read it like it's a history book. So now, I got to become spiritual to understand what's in the book. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Just like, amen, this right here, I know people teach people and say, this is the word of God. This is not the word of God. They say, they know, this is not the word of God. This is scripture. Amen. amen. And what we pull from the scripture, me preaching to you, is the word of God. Amen. And so what happens is, me preaching the word of God, the word of God become made flesh in you. Yes. I ain't got time to deal with that. Now, let, 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 let me give this. Now, let me give you this. Go back to 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. Read, huh? But the natural man, but the natural man, receiveth not the things of the spirit receive of God. Receive not the oh God. So what happens is, when I see God in my natural state or in my natural mind, I can't comprehend it. Right. That's why when you try to figure God out, you can't get it. Amen. Can I be honest with you? You ain't gonna get it. I said, well, why, why would He create me, and I'm His creator, but I can't, I can't understand it. What, what is it? Why, why can't I get this? Because you are not the God, the Spirit, the Almighty God. Oh my God, you're not it. The Bible even talks about God hiding things from people. Can I be honest with you? The Bible said that he hides things from people that think they're too smart. That's right. Lord. He said that he'll, he'll hide it from the wise and the prudent, and then he will reveal it. Unto the babes. That's what he said. Well, Pastor, what does that mean? God said he'd rather take somebody that don't know anything yes. and deal with them than the people that think they're smarter than God. Because you got some folks that think they're smarter than the one that created them. That's true. I got. They got real quiet. Y'all all right? <laughs> all right. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Uh huh. For they are foolishness. Unto him. Now, this is where you get the, the atheist and the, 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 the scientist uh, movement because it's foolishness unto them. Yes. It's foolish to say that there's a God that has always existed and created everything. It's foolish to them because they can't comprehend that. Yes. Read, uh-huh. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now, he's saying that the things of God are now spiritually discerned. So the only way that you can get it is by his spirit. That's why a lot of times people can't receive certain things in the Bible because they don't have the spirit. Amen. And see what the spirit does, it helps you receive it. Amen. Because if you ain't had a spirit, you'd be looking just like them like, "God, what? <laughs> How did he do that?" Now, let me go let me go a little step further and I'm going to prove to you, amen, that Jesus in fact, is this God of the universe. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. All right, now, I want you to go down there, amen, to the book of Colossians. Chapter 1. Amen, y'all with me? Yes. Now, 1 and verse number 13. Uh -huh. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son uh -huh. in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin all right so the bible is letting us know that there was a person that uh, uh shed blood and we got forgiveness of our sins now the, the the average person that have ever read a biblical story would know that this person that he's talking about is jesus Amen. is that right Amen. Amen. People know about him being on the cross. They know that he was pierced in his side. They know that he had thorns on his head. They, they, they know all of these different things about Jesus. But they fail to understand is that Jesus, in fact, was God in a fleshly form. Amen. All right? Now, he talks about the blood. Now, I want you to read the next verse, huh? Who is the image? Now, we understand who we're talking about now. The person that had the blood and that shed it is the image of the invisible God. All right, so now we find that God is invisible. Yes. Amen. Y'all all right? Yes. 
Can I be honest with you? People don't, people don't believe in things being invisible, but I'll tell you this. Every man in here, stand up. If you're a man, stand up. <coughs> All right? Joel, you got a bunch of kids in you that we can't see. Oh, my God. LaRon, all y'all young men, all y'all men, every man in here has kids that you can't see. Amen. But what happens is, once it's placed in the right environment, what is invisible become visible. Y'all can be seen. So, Pastor, now, okay, so there are invisible things, amen, that I cannot see, amen, but those things that which is invisible can become visible when it's in the proper form. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, just as God. The Bible says this. I want you to leave your finger there because we have to go back here because this is what I want to teach from today. I want you to go down there, amen, to the book, hallelujah, of John. All right? We must understand that that which is invisible can, in fact, be visible. All right? Y'all follow me? And sometimes people can't comprehend that, but it's true. Amen. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a bunch of germs in here. You got germs in your hands. Amen. It's germs everywhere. But you can't see it. So how can we say that God is invisible and God put himself in a body. How we can't believe that? And be in the same place at the same time. Or at, at, at two different places at the same time and still be one God. Yeah. Can I be honest with you? Come here, Frankie. All right? I got Frankie. He's over here. He over there. Adi, I'm, wave your hand. The, the baby right here. That's Frank right there. That's him right there and his wife. All of that is him. So you telling me that this man is here and over there at the same time and it's still him. Let me give you an example now. Thank you. All right. Let me prove this on the Bible. Go down there back to Genesis. Hallelujah. Genesis. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm in, I'm in a few locations myself at one time. Oh. How, do, how, you in, how you in Savannah, Riceboro, and Statesboro all at the same time? Right. Let me show you from the Bible. Now, God didn't even acknowledge Eve as a different person. <laughs> all right. Genesis chapter 2 and verse number 21. Read, uh huh. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Uh huh. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and clothed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman. All right, now, God took a rib out of Adam, Lord have mercy, Lord. and created a woman. Let me do this demonstration. All right? Uh, let me get a, where y'all married saints at? Come here, uh, Daisy, you, is that right? Who else married? Come here, LeRon. All right? Now, what happened was God took Adam. He opened him up, took a rib out, and placed him over here. So this was Adam, but this was Adam as well because that's Adam's rib. So now you got Adam, you got his rib, and then when Adam and his rib came together, they had Cain and Abel. Uh -huh. Now, when the Bible talks about Adam and Eve, God don't even refer to Eve as Eve. Uh -huh. Let me show you this. You be seated. All right? Now, the Bible, I hope y'all following me. Now, it goes even deeper. Read, uh-huh. And Adam said. And Adam said. This is now bone of my wait bone. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, this is now the bone 
of my bone. Uh huh. And flesh of my flesh. Now he said, not only is these my bones, but that's my flesh too. Yes, Lord. Read. She shall be called woman. She's going to be called woman. Because she was taken out of man. Because she was taken out of man. Now watch this. Read. Uh-huh. Therefore shall a man cleave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. And they shall be one flesh. All right. Now he's saying that Adam and Eve was one flesh. I'm, I'm going to prove this because I got to follow me because I got I to paint this picture good for you. All right. Read. Uh-huh. And they bo were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. All right. Now. I want you to go to Genesis chapter 5. This is how I'm going to prove that Adam and Eve, amen, in fact, were the same. And then Cain and Abel came out of Adam, and they were Adam as well because they came from him. Amen. But we're not saying, amen, that they're different. They, they have a, a, a different functionalities or different roles because those are sons and a wife, all the different things like that. But that's still from Adam. Mm -hmm. All right, read, uh-huh. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Genesis 5, uh -huh, 5 and 1. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Uh -huh. Male and female created he them and blessed them. And blessed them. And called their name. And called their name. Now, and wait a minute. He didn't say call his name, but he said call their, their name. name. This is why when Laron comes together with Deja, she's no longer Lee, but now she's Laron Randall. Lord, I wish I had a few of y'all with me. So now this is why every married couple and the kids from the father, they get his name. That's right. That's it. Every child and the spouse of the husband gets his name. So now you got Randall over there and Randall over there, but it's still Randall. <laughs> All right, let me move forward. Let me move forward. All right, go back, amen, to first, uh, go to Colossians chapter 1. Let me give this to y'all. Give me like 15 minutes, and I'm going to explain this thing as best as I can and just give it to you, amen, so you can understand it. All right. Colossians 1 and 15, uh-huh. Who is the image of the invisible God. Image of the invisible God. The firstborn. Firstborn. Of every creature. Uh-huh. For by him are all things created. Wait one minute. So the person that was crucified on the cross, the Bible says that he created all things. <laughs> we got a problem. Because I thought the Bible said that Jesus was the son. Uh, come on. <laughs> Is that not what the Bible says? Bible said that Jesus was a son. So if he was a son, and then the Bible said that Jesus created all things, if we, have, if we can't spiritualize, we can't really make the Bible harmonize, then that means that Jesus created God. Yes. <laughs> oh, Lord. All right, let me, I got to break it down so you can understand what I'm saying because I don't want you to leave out here confused. All right? So if we say with this, because this scripture is clearly saying that Jesus created, watch what he created. He created all things, uh, and what else? Uh -huh. That are in heaven. So Jesus created the angels. Ooh, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Read. And that are in earth. And that are in earth. So he created uh, things that are in earth, uh-huh. Visible. Visible. And invisible. Wait a minute. So <laughs> when... Now, we're saying that Jesus done created the whole spirit realm. Then that means that Jesus created the heavens. This thing getting tough now. I got to show you what it's saying now. Read, uh-huh. Whether they be thrones, thrones or dominions, dominions or principalities uh -huh. or powers, all things. All are things. How many things the Bible say? Right, no, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait one minute. How many things were created? All things. All things were created by who? Him. 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 Talk about Jesus. Read. And for him. And for him. So not, Lord, God. So did Jesus create <laughs> God to be his father? Because the Bible says, go down to the Ephesians chapter 4. Leave your finger there. We got to come back because we got to visit that thing. I got to make sure y'all get this thing right. All right, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 4. What does that say? 
There is one body. One body. And one spirit. One spirit. Even as ye are, are called in now, one let hope. Let me deal with this one spirit real quickly. We're going to fast forward because I can't really deal with it as, as, as hard as I want to. Y'all come back <laughs> next week. I might deal with it a little harder. Now, if it say that it's one spirit. Now, people try to say that Jesus was on the left hand of God or the right hand of God and the Holy Ghost was on the other side and they said, amen, that they was all in heaven at the same time. One spirit. Now, if that's the case, then that would be three different spirits. God the Father would have to be a spirit. God the Son, because people say that the Son is eternal. The Son wasn't eternal. The, 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 the Son had a, a, a born day and he had a, a death day. Because the Son is not eternal, but the God that's in the no. See, the God that's in the Son was eternal. See, he put the sun on so that we could see him. You remember he said, Philip, how was you here with me this whole time and you don't know that I am the father? Philip, are you crazy? You can't see the God in the sun? Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, he said there's one body, one spirit, even as you are calling to one hope of your calling. Read, uh-huh. One Lord. One Lord. One faith. One faith. One baptism. One baptism. Huh? One God. Wait one minute. So if there's one God, we can't have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Oh, my, 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 my. I can't have God the Son, God the Father, and God the Holy Ghost if there's only one God. And then it goes on to say that this God is Father of all. So if he's father of all, then Jesus the Son couldn't have created God the Father. God, this thing is, I love this gospel. Watch this, read. Now, this is what's going to get me. Now, this one God, the Bible says, now, let me ask y'all a question. How many of y'all got God's spirit in you? Now, if all of y'all got God's spirit in you, Amen. Do you think it's 50 different gods in here? Yeah. Got God one, God two, God three, God four, God five, God six, God seven. We got all these different gods in here. If God is in you, or is it just that one God just placed inside of you? Omnipresent everywhere, all at the same time. The almighty God and his name is Jesus. Now, this is the problem I'm going to have now because this scripture says that one God and Father of all, uh huh, who is above all, it puts them in a position of a ball, above, uh huh, and through all. Then it talks about this above God is through, uh huh, and in you all. So, you, so he's in, through, and above all at the same time. Yes. But it's the same one God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, let me go back down to the Colossians. All right. All right, go to 17. And he is before all things. And he is before all things. My God. So Jesus was before everything. Yes. But if God exists, was they in a race trying to find out who was in front of who? <laughs> oh God. Because if God, if, if God was before th all things and Jesus was before all things, then he said we were before all things. Wow. But him, singular, he, singular, was before all things. Oh my God. Lord, somebody shout hallelujah. And by him, all things consist. All things consist by him. Uh huh. And he is the head of the body. Wait a minute. Who's the head of the body? <laughs> what does the Bible say in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11? It talks about Jesus being the head. Oh, God. Yeah, God, somebody shout hallelujah. Head of the body, uh huh. The church. The church. Who is the beginning? Who is the beginning? The firstborn from the dead. Uh huh. That in all things, he might have the preeminence. Now, let me go down to the second chapter. Colossians chapter 2 
and, 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 and we, we got to get this thing right because I want to make sure because we'll be taught, and, and I'm going to close here in a second. We are, people are taught that Jesus is the second person in the Godhead. First of all, the Godhead ain't in three. No, sir. Because God is one. So if the Godhead is one, then it has to be, uh, I mean, if, the, if God is one, then the Godhead has to be one. So there ain't no separate parts or no vis divisions in there. Nope. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Now, go to, I want you to start at, Watch this. Go to the second verse. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love. God, I wish I had some time. Read, and uh -huh. unto all riches of the fullness assurance of understanding, uh -huh. to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God. All right. So he said there's a mystery of God. And of the Father. Wait a minute. Is <laughs> God not the Father? Yeah. So why would he say and of the Father? And then it goes further and says what? And of Christ. And of Christ. So now the mystery is not God the Father and Christ. The mystery is who is the Father and who is Christ. Yes. Lord, I wish I had a few of y'all with me. Can I say that one more time so you can get it? I think it went over a few people's head. Let me say it again. All right. Understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ. If God is the Father, why would it say God and a Father and then it says Christ? Because the mystery is not if God is God, but the mystery is was God the Father and was he Christ? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now we can read a little further, huh? In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So now the knowledge and the treasures, see, the knowledge that we have is hidden, but it's treasure. Because everybody don't believe that Jesus is God and God alone. So he said it's a hidden treasure. Watch this, read. Head of all treasures, wisdom of knowledge, uh-huh. And this I say, uh -huh. lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. Like, can I tell you something? The Trinity is a beguile of enticing That's words. Word. Yes, it is. My God. Because it's about to show you. Read, uh-huh. For though I be absent in the flesh, uh -huh. yet am I with you in the spirit. This is Paul talking to them, telling them that he's giving them instructions. Don't be, don't be, don't be confused by enticing words that people are going to try to make God into three. He said, I know I'm not there with y'all, but I'm there in the spirit. Read, uh-huh. Join and behold in your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Uh-huh. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ Jesus the what? The Lord. And, and in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, it says one Lord, one faith, one baptism. So that <laughs> one Lord is Jesus. Now read this, uh-huh. So, so you walk, walk in him. Uh-huh. So walk ye in him. Uh-huh. Rooted, Rooted and built up uh -huh. in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Uh-huh. Beware lest any man spoil you. Wait, wait, wait. Beware lest any man spoil you with what? Or through, through what? Philosophy, philosophy and vain deceit. Vain deceit after after the, tradition the tradition of men. Don't be confused by that traditional Baptist church telling you that God is three people. Yes, sir. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Can I be honest? The Apostolic Church is the real Baptist church. Because we baptize in Jesus' name. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Can I tell, can I be a little, I'm more honest with you? The apostolic church is the true Catholic church. Yeah. Ah, so y'all looking funny. Oh, hold on, we about, no, we ain't hailing no Mary in here. All Catholic mean is universal. And this, Lord have mercy, and this gospel got to reach everywhere. We are, amen, the real Catholic church. We the real Methodist church, amen. Because we got the right methods to salvation. Y'all shout, somebody shout hallelujah. We are the real Presbyterian church because we believe in the power of the Presbyterian. Somebody shout hallelujah. No church out there, that, 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 listen, they just got the title. They don't have the action. If you baptize, you're supposed to baptize in Jesus' name. You're supposed to be baptized no Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Ain't no power in Father, no power in Son, and no power in Holy Ghost just saying it. You go down there and try to cast a check and put Father, Son, and Holy Ghost on there. 
Father, Son, Holy Ghost are all titles. Those are not names. Yes. Down in that water, dipping people three times, talking about in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Ain't no power in that. You might just put your swimsuit on and go swimming because that ain't no baptism. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Now he said, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. So he's saying that all this stuff that people are teaching, a lot of people are teaching tradition, but they're not teaching truth. Right. And can I get, get I'm just going to be honest with you. A lot of people love tradition over truth. Yes, they do. Don't know. Everybody take them traditional lies over the truth. All right, read. I got to get y'all out of here. Read. Huh? in him. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So in Jesus dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Meaning that when he manifested himself on the earth, he was God. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. All right, I'm going I'm to I'm prove this a little further. I, I was, I'm going to do a part two next week because I can't, I, I can't keep y'all here no longer. All right, go down to John chapter 1 and verse number 1. All right? John 1 and 1. This is Jesus, the God of the universe. Uh-huh, read. In the, in beginning, the beginning uh -huh. was the word. Now, this to people, I mean, to me, you know, when I read this, it makes so much sense to it me. It does, amen. It don't make sense to everybody, but it makes sense to me. Watch this. In the beginning was the word, uh-huh. And the word was with God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word was God. Now, I want you to jump down to the 14th verse. Let's just see what it's saying. And the word was and made the flesh. And the word was made what? Flesh. So the word that was God was made flesh. So in essence, God became what? Flesh. That's it. That's one plus one and two plus two, amen, to uh, uh, elementary kids, right? Now. We got to make sure that this is consistent throughout the Bible. Now, if there's three gods, then that means that they'll have to be beside each other. They have to it, it coexist, if you will, as people right. say. Now, let's go down to the Isaiah, and I'm going to close, I promise. Y'all give me four scriptures, and I'm letting you go. <laughs> Isaiah chapter number 40, verse number 25. Read, uh-huh. And we got to remember that the Bible said that Jesus created everything. All right, read, uh-huh. To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One. So God is saying, shall I be equal. Now, remember, and I don't have time for you to go there, but Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number uh, 6 or 7, it talks about Jesus being equal with God yes. while he was on the earth. Yes. Now, the Bible said there's nobody equal with him. My. Amen. All right, now, read, uh, read on, uh-huh. Lift up your eyes on high, and behold who have created these things, that bringeth out their, their host by number. He called them all by name, by the greatness of his might, for he is strong in power, not one faileth. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, o, my, o Israel, my way is hid from the Lord, and my judgment is passed over from God? Now, what verse you on? 27. All right, go to 44 and 6. Isaiah, same chapter, I mean, same book, 44 and verse number 6. Uh -huh. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel. And his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. I am the first. I, now, this is God talking. He said, I am the first. And I am the last. And I'm the last. And beside me. And beside me. There is no God. There's no other God. Now, let me explain this real quick. When you look at the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 14, it says the same exact thing. It says, I am the first and the last. And that was Jesus speaking. Uh -huh. So Jesus said, I am the first and I'm the last. God said it in the Old Testament, I am the first and I'm the last. And then he said that beside me, there's what? No God. No God. So if beside God there's no God, then we can't say that God the Father or God the Son on the right side of him, and that's another God, because he said beside me there's no other God. Somebody shout holler. Y'all with me? All right, now, read to, uh, 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 where I got you at? 46, 44, uh, 6. Uh -huh. All right, go to 45 and 5. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. And there is none else. And there is none else. There is no God. There is no God. Beside me. Beside me. Now, this is the part I want you to see. Because this part makes so much sense. All right. Read, uh-huh. 
I girded thee. I girded thee. Lo, thou hast not known me. What, what verse you on? That was five. All right, uh-huh. That they may know from the rising of the sun. Now, I want you to see this term that he used. From the rising of the sun. And from the west. And from the what? The west. The west. Now, let me explain this. When you look at a compass, and you look at north, south, east, and west. Right. If, if this is north, south, east, and west, where, where the west at? So from your reading, it's got to say we, right? Uh -huh. So which way is it? This going to be this hand right here, right? Wh which hand is that? The right hand. It's the right hand, right? So he said from, but read that again. I want to explain this thing now. Read it, huh? That they may know from the rising of the from sun, the of the sun and, from the west, and from the what? The west. The right side. From the right side, read. That there is none beside me. Wait a minute. Why would he choose the right side and say there ain't no God over there? Because people try to put Jesus as the right hand of God. He said, in essence, God said, man, I, I, done, I done searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. Everybody trying to put, they try to put Jesus on the right hand of God, not knowing that Jesus is God. Now, this shows you that there isn't nobody on the right side of them. Uh -huh. Now, there's another verse that tells you that there ain't no Savior over there, and we know that the Savior is Jesus. Yes. God, I wish I had a few minutes. All right, 43 and 11 of Isaiah, and, 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 and y'all give me a second, I'm about to close, uh-huh. 43 and 11. I, even I, I, even I, am the Lord. I'm the Lord. And beside me, and beside me, there is no there savior. is no what savior. Savior, <laughs> who was the savior? Jesus. Jesus is the savior, but he's not sitting beside God. Listen, Jesus is the savior, but he's not sitting beside God. So we can't put him on the side of God if God's saying you're telling you there's nobody beside me. So if there's nobody beside me, then that has to mean that I am he and he is me. That's right. Jesus said, I am the first and the last. I gave you a demonstration before. First and the last can only be there at the same time if it's only that person. That's right. Amen. Now, I'm going to close on this because I got to let y'all go. I, got I want you to go to John chapter 14. It's going to seal the deal. That God's the, Jesus is the God of the universe. Yes, he is. I'll close down my Bible. All right. Now, I want y'all to pay very close attention to this here verse. 14, and where that conversation start at? Three? All right, 14 and three. And if I go uh -huh. and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Wait a minute. I, I, <laughs> So Jesus is talking, and he's saying that I'm going to leave. <laughs> then he said, I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself. So in essence, when the rapture takes place, he's receiving us unto him. Yes. Who's coming back to get us? God. That is good. All right, I ain't done read, uh-huh. That where I am, where I am, there ye may be also. You're gonna be there as well, uh-huh. And whither I go, and whither I go, ye know, uh-huh. And the way ye know, uh-huh. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. Now, now one of his <laughs> apostles asked him a question. He said, We, we don't know where you're going, uh-huh. And, and how can we know the way? He said, How, how are we gonna know the way, uh-huh? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. He said, Listen, I'm the way that you're trying to get. In essence, I'm the God that you're trying to get to. My God. Read, uh-huh. The truth. The truth. And the life. And the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. All right. So he said, no man come to the Father but by me. So now you got to understand it. He said, well, hold on, Pastor. I thought you said that the Father and the Son is the same person. Come on. All right. Let me show you. Read on, uh-huh. If ye had known me. If you've known me. Ye should have known my Father also. You, you wait a minute. So now... <laughs> Jesus, he talked about the Father, but then he went on the further further and said, well, listen, if you know me, you should have known the Father. Y'all looking for the Father, but if you known me, you would have knew that I am the Father. Watch this now. And from henceforth. And from this day forward. Ye know him. You're going to know him. And have seen him. And have what? <laughs> Wait a minute. So. 
Jesus is saying that from this day forward, while you're looking at me, you're not just seeing a manifestation of me, but you're seeing God in a flesh body. He said, if you've known me, you should have known the Father. And from his form, ye know him and have what? Seen him. Now, the Bible says that God is invisible. My God. But then Jesus just said, you just saw God. So the invisible God was in a visible body. All right, let, let, me, let me go a little further because this, this verse ain't done here. Read, uh-huh. Philip said unto him. Now, Philip right here listening to the conversation. Philip Lord, listening. He, Lord, said, he said, Lord. Show us the Father. We, we want to see the Father. And hey, it suffices hey. us. <laughs> now, he listening to the conversation that Jesus having with Thomas. And then he said, hey, Lord, when, when, when are you going to show us the Father? Because it's going to make us feel a little better. Right. He said it's going to do great things for us. It's going to suffice us. We'll be sufficient. Read, uh-huh. Jesus said unto him. Pay attention now. Jesus said unto him. Have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? Now, he said, now remember what the question was. The question was, can you show us who the Father is? And then Jesus said to Philip, he said, have I been with you this long time, and you don't even know who I am? People have been in church all this time, and they still don't know who Jesus is. They've been coming to service after service after service, church after church after church, and still don't know who Jesus is. Oh my God. <laughs> Say, you done been with me all this long time and you don't even know me. Read, uh-huh. He that have seen me. Now, this is the key. He that have seen me. Have seen the Father. Have seen the Father. If you've seen me. You've seen the Father. If you've seen me, 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 you've seen the Father. That's what it's saying. If you're looking at me, you're looking at the Father. All right, read, uh-huh. And how say it thou then? He said, how are you going to say? Show us the Father. Show us the Father. Read, uh-huh. Believe is thou not? That I am in the Father and the Father in me. Now, he said that I'm in the Father wow. and the Father, the Father is, is in me. me. I got to stop there. Everyone's standing. I'm going to stop. <laughs> he said that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me, but it don't change who I am. Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, Jesus, Jesus is the God, is the God of, the of the universe. Say, Jesus created everything. Jesus created. God is Jesus. Can I be honest with you? You know what Kojic stands for? Church of God where? In Christ. We the real ch Kojic church because we believe that, Lord, have mercy, that God was in Christ. How the church is called Church of God in Christ, but don't believe that God was in Christ. How you, how you, your church name is Church of God in Christ, but you don't believe that God is in Christ. You don't believe that they're one. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Jesus is the God of the universe. Jesus is God. There's not no three party that's creating anything. It's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and the Bible said it's one God. So we can't put another God over there. Then he had a nerve to go ahead and tell you, don't put no God on the west wing. Because mainstream churches will tell you that God, no, Jesus, the God, is on the right hand of God. But he said, I don't want you to put nobody over there. Then he said, I don't want you to put no Savior over there. Because I did this by myself. Because if Jesus had a partner in crime, he wouldn't be God. If, he, if, if we had all this God, or you got this God there, that God, they're sitting up there, sitting up there like this. Say, which one of us going to, you create the moon, I'm going to create the stars. You go over there and create the water. 
then that wouldn't be God. God is the creator of everything. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hands, let us pray. God, we thank you, Lord. We appreciate you. Lord, we know that you are God. You are God above all things. You've created all things. By you, everything exists. By you, everything consists. By you, God, you made the heavens, you made the earth, you made me, you made my mama, you made my daddy. It was you. It was your work. God, you are the greatest artist that ever lived. Lord, you put the clouds in the sky. God, you put the stars in the moon. God, you put the planets where they are. God, you placed us in this uh, galaxy. Lord, we thank you for being a great artist. You're the one that got the grass growing like it's growing. You're the one that got the trees growing like it's growing. God, it's you that created every animal, every beast of the field, every fowl of the air. It's you, God. And we thank you for revealing your name to us. You're not God the unknown. But you are God the known and your name is Jesus. And God, we appreciate you this day. Thank you for the truth that you dispersed today. Thank you for the information that you have given by the will to receive, Lord. God, touch every heart. God, allow your word to marinate in the spirit. Lord, I pray, God, that it's easy, God, to process. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray now, God, that we see you for who you are. Thank you for who you are and not for what you've done. God, you don't have to do another thing for us. God, we just thank you for being God and thank you for revealing Thank you for the revelation. For you said there's a great mystery of godliness. And you, God, was manifested in the flesh and justified in the spirit. And God, we thank you for opening our eyes to this great mystery. God, we understand that you can be a son and a father at the same time. God, just as I'm a father to my children, but I'm a son to my parents, God, let us see I am still the same one person. God, even as you played the role son and father all at the same time, and you did it because you're God. There's nobody that can duplicate what you did because you are God. There's nobody that create can create the things that you've created, God, because you're God. You're the most holy, omnipotent, powerful God, and we thank you for revealing yourself to us. We appreciate you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says this, except the man is born of the water and